been among our most popular items for many years, and our selection is bigger than ever, with more features and options to suit your applications. I'm excited to talk about these products, and I'm doubly excited to introduce you to Robert, who, a little later, will be walking us through a live demonstration of how to program our HMIs with our free HMI Works development software. First, let's take a look at our agenda. Today we're going to learn about the different types of HMIs that we have available and how they fit into your industry. We're going to demonstrate how these products can simplify systems by doing many jobs at once, and then we'll jump into our HMI Works demonstration. Finally, we'll look at some application examples before jumping into our Q&A session. Uh, I do ask that you hold your questions until the end, although if you think of one during the presentation, feel free to type it into the Q&A box through your Zoom toolbar, and we'll get to those in a first-come, first-served basis at the end. Or you can raise your hand again through the Zoom toolbar, and you can ask your question live, and we'll answer it during the Q&A. Before we get into it, a little bit about us. ICP DOS USA, or, or sorry, ICP DOS was founded in 1993. Our headquarters is located in Sinchu, Taiwan. ICP DOS USA was founded in 2001 to support the North and South American markets when we're located in Lomita, California. We have over 100 R&D engineers working to develop new products and to support our customers, and we always take customer input very seriously when it comes to designing new products or updating our current lines of products. We're ISO 9001 certified in the States, SGS certified in the UK, we are a Windows embedded partner, and our products are Rojas compliant. So... Let's talk a little bit about our touchpads. Engineers in many different industries have applications requiring an easy way to display sensor data and to provide localized control over many different types of devices through Ethernet and serial networks. ICP DOS USA developed our touchpad series of touchscreen HMIs to provide all those features in an attractive, unobtrusive package. Our most popular HMI series, the TPD280 series, is a 2.8-inch touchscreen controller that fits into a standard electrical outlet box. Different versions of the TPD280 provide an Ethernet port, an RS-485 port, or both. And with our HMI Works development software, you can design a completely custom UI and control system in well under an hour. The TPD series touchscreens come in a 2.8 inch, 4.3 inch, and 7 inch versions, and are a perfect fit for warehouses, office, schools, labs, and homes. The VPD series offer a more rugged housing, expandable I.O., and a rubber keypad, making them ideal for industrial and outdoor applications. And HMI Works makes our products easy to use at any programming level, providing a drag-and-drop visual editor, ladder designer, and C programming environment. This is a very broad example of the kinds of systems you can build using a touchpad controller. Different module versions provide different combinations of communication interfaces and protocols. The TPD-283U-H, for instance, provides one Ethernet and one RS-485 interface with Modbus TCP, Modbus RTU, and DECON protocol handling. As you can see in the diagram, the TPD-283 interfaces with the Ethernet and serial networks and acts as a Modbus master for your end devices. With one controller, you can integrate data acquisition modules, relays, temperature and humidity sensors, occupancy sensors, door controls, AV equipment, and more. The module reads and displays Modbus or DECON values from the network and can change I.O. values according to, to your schedule or the functions you've assigned to the touch interface. One common use for this module is as a thermostat. You can read and display 
temperature and humidity values, turn fans and AC units off and on, program schedules, and keep the uh, room or zone temperature at a set point. The Ethernet interface means you are always connected to the control center. You can control the entire building automation system from a central location while giving occupants control over their local environment. But the TPD series is so much more than a digital thermostat. It's completely customizable, and since you can read and display any Modbus or Decon value, it can be applied at the same level in your system architecture in many different industries. Local process control with machine feedback, lighting and AV control for an auditorium or conference room, and again, the Ethernet interface connects you to your building automation or SCADA system. ICP-USA provides two types of touchpads, the TPD series and the VPD series. The TPD series are designed for home and building automation, and the VPD series is designed for factory and machine automation. Both have many common features, such as their high contrast color touchscreen, serial and ethernet interfaces, and the free HMI Works development tool. We're not going into much depth on the VPD series in this webinar, but I do want to quickly highlight some of the similarities and differences. The main difference being the expandable I.O. board on the, or sorry, expandable I.O. cards with the VPD modules, the rubber keypad, and the IP65 ingress protected front panel. Uh, also, the VPD series are designed to be panel mounted or DIN mounted, depending on your application. Our most popular touchpads are the TPD 280 series, and this is the 2.8 inch screen version. The base models in this series are the TPD 280H and the TPD 283H. Both 280 and the 283U provide an RS-485 interface, and the 283 modules provide an Ethernet interface and the, uh, the 283U mod, uh, module provides both Ethernet and serial interfaces. The difference between the base model and the U version is that the U versions offer expanded RAM and flash storage. The base models can store up to four images, where the U models have 16 megabytes of flash storage for images. As you can see in the picture, the modules can be oriented in portrait or landscape mode, and you designate which during programming and configuration. A couple more features I'd like to highlight for the TPD 280 series is that our C language programming environment in HMI Works provides a rich TCP, IP, and UART API which allows you to develop private communication protocols for those devices that don't use standard Modbus protocols. In addition, this series offers two types of watchdogs. One is the module watchdog, which means if a touchpad crashes, the touchpad is protected and will reboot. The other watchdog is the communication watchdog, which means that if Modbus TCP communication times out, then the touchpad will also reboot. And finally, I'd like to add that our touchscreens offer multi-language support for English, Spanish, French, German, and Italian. Like I mentioned before, our TPD 280 series is the 2.8 inch version, is the most popular touchpad, but we do have the 4.3 inch and a 7 inch version, and, I, and this diagram can tell you how at a glance to see what you're getting. So for the TPD 280 series, again, that's a 2.8 inch screen, the uh, 280 indicates that it provides the RS-485 interface. 280U uh, indicates RS-485 plus real-time clock. 283 indicates ethernet. And 283U indicates RS-485 plus real-time clock plus ethernet. And for the 430, uh, the zero is RS-485, 432 would indicate two RS-485, whereas 433 would indicate RS-485 or RS-232 and Ethernet and the optional flat type panel for the 430 series. And for the 7-inch series, we have the, <coughs> uh, the 703, 
which off, uh, which offers Ethernet. Um, and then there are special designations there at the end. There's an EU version for European size outlet boxes. H is the high speed version. Uh, we no longer offer the low speed version. I guess you would call it. the The old base models were phased out in favor of the H version, so they're all high speed versions now. M1 through M3 are different panel style selections, uh, but the same module underneath. And then 64 would indicate the uh, largest flash memory and and RAM size, which in 64 megabytes. So let's take a little uh, a look at our selection of touchpads. So this is an opportunity to show off the variety that we have available to you. And one question our customers often ask is whether or not they should purchase the modules with expanded storage. So I wanted to show you the difference, which really comes down to image storage capacity. The base model TPD280 series can store four images, whereas the 16 megabyte versions can store 108 images at, at the 2.8 inch resolution. And for the 4.3 inch versions, they only offer the 16 megabyte flash storage, which stores 64 images at that resolution. And for the 7-inch versions, they come in a 16 or 64 megabyte version, which stores 18 or 84 images, respectively, at the 7-inch resolution. If we go back to that first slide, you'll notice that the M1, M2, and M3 versions are there, and those are the same modules with different faceplates. The standard faceplate it is, is designed to fit flush against the wall when the touchscreen is placed inside the outlet box and the whole unit is about the size of a light switch panel. The other faceplate versions are slightly larger, landscape-oriented, and they come in different colors. So let's take a look at those now. I figured since I mentioned them, I might as well show them. So the top left is the standard faceplate, followed by the M1 on the top right, M2 bottom left, and M3 there on the bottom right. That's just to give you an idea of the different faceplates that we have. And again, you can see the different communication options and power options. Um, these can also, also come with an optional external wall box that you can order separately if they don't fit inside the, or if you don't want them to be inside of the, uh, the internal outlet box. And the TPD430 series will give you an example of what we have available. So we have Ethernet and RS-45 or Ethernet and RS-232 communication options, as well as the 7-inch panel. And again, the face plates. All right, so that's it for our selection. Uh, at this point, I want to turn you over to our application engineer, Robert, and he's going to take you through a live demonstration of how to program our HMIs using our free HMI Works development software. So please, let's welcome Robert to the floor. Okay, you should all be able to see my screen. It's the same screen as Colin had previously, but uh, today I'll go over HMI Works, which is the free a uh, software package used for creating HMI screens, communication, and program logic for our TPD and BPD series. Today we will show you the features and programming environment. Okay, there we go. HMI Works is a WYSIWYG uh, programming environment. You can use our built-in widgets to shorten development time and uh, make your pro uh, project uh, simpler to create. And we also have a built-in library with many, many objects, or you can import your own as well. <clears throat> Let's see. When you open your software for the first time, it will look like this. <clears throat> the left side contains the workspace and toolbox tabs. The workspace tab is where you have access to your ladder designer under the program, uh, uh, what do you call it? the word program, uh, if you expand the little uh, plus sign next to it. <clears throat> uh, you can create your own connections to your COM ports or to your Ethernet ports, including uh, baud rate and parity settings. 
And you can also create your devices and device profiles for your Modbus, uh, Modbus RTU, Modbus TCP, and DCON uh, devices, in addition to creating virtual tags to use within your project. Um, let's see, this is also where you can create your Modbus Master and Modbus Slave device profiles. Uh, let's see, you can create, uh, let's see, the toolbox is where you have your widgets, <coughs> which we'll go over next. Uh, your VPD and TPD series screen is shown here in the middle. <clears throat> this is where you drag and drop widgets and images to create your project. <clears throat> On the right side, we have our inspector and uh, a library tab. <clears throat> and this is where uh, the inspector tab is where you modify the properties of the selected objects. I'll give you some examples shortly. Uh, let's see, we will now explore the different drawing objects and widgets found in the Toolbox tab. Let's see, first of all, we have our drawing objects. Uh, these are shown here in the list. Let's see, within the Drawing tab, we have, let's see, the different objects. Uh, the Rectangle tool is used to draw squares and rectangles on your screen. You can edit the properties on the right side in the Inspector tab. Uh, the Ellipse tool is used to draw ellipses and circles. Uh, the Text box is used to place text on the screen in the text box. You can enter and modify the text and font styles in the Inspector tab on the right side. <clears throat> The picture tool is used to select images to display and position them on your screen. <clears throat> and at any time you can select the arrow widget to select objects and drag and drop or expand them. <clears throat> Let's see, the line, con line icon is used to draw simple lines. and you can uh, view the properties in the Inspector tab on the right side. And here you can load your own uh, images if you want, or you can add them to the library prior as well. <clears throat> and this is the line widget, just simply drawing lines. You can modify the thickness, the position, the orientation by either dragging and dropping, or you can modify the properties on the right side. Let's see, the control widgets are shown here. You can access them by clicking on the widget tab or pressing the control uh, two here. Let's see, these are the buttons, sliders, and control objects you can use to design your controls from the touchpad. Uh, the label widget is one of the most overlooked and useful objects. You can use this to display Modbus register values easily and make your project uh, look much better. <coughs> Let's see, now we'll go over some examples. Let's see, to use the, these widgets, simply click on them and drag and drop and position and resize them on your screen with your mouse. Again, the properties are editable on the right side in the Inspector tab. Uh, the Text Push button is lab the labeled button as shown on the screen. You can edit the text and font in the Inspector tab, as well as define the tag which is associated with this object. When the button is pressed, the tag will change to a one value. When the button is unpressed, it will be a zero value. <clears throat> Let's see, the slider widget can be used to display or control analog values. I will show you a great example of how to use this in a little bit. <clears throat> Let's see, it can be vertical or horizontal in orientation. And again, the example shortly will show you how to use that and what it looks like. <clears throat> Let's see, the bit button is a momentary button object for the most part that can be used to trigger an action based on the tag. For instance, it's often used to uh, navigate between screens 
The hotspot widget is a hidden button or a defined area of the screen that will act as a button. I'll show you a great example of this in a little bit. Essentially, you can use it under an, a picture that's uh, created and or you can use as shown where you just uh, type uh, some text on there and you can label the button or show its function uh, like that. The checkbox widget is used in conjunction with our object list. <clears throat> when the tag value associated with the checkbox is changed or pressed, the image will change in the box. So I'll show you an example of that also shortly. <clears throat> uh, the label widget <clears throat> allows users to easily display Modbus register values or virtual tag values. <clears throat> and you can edit the font and uh, style of it to make it uh, look much better. And you can position it uh, uh, using the properties in the inspector. <clears throat> Let's see, finally, the radio button is used to select one of many states or actions or display the state or action that's currently happening. <clears throat> if you're familiar with the radio button, it's like case one, case two, case three, and so on and so forth. But only one, or theoretically, only one radio button will be filled at a time. And when you change the radio button state, the others will, uh, what do you call it, be blank. <clears throat> Okay, <clears throat> uh, under the system tab, uh, there's a few more uh, widgets and objects. Uh, in here is the timer widget, uh, which is mainly used in C programming, but is also used as a normal timer. Uh, let's see, you can embed your C code in the timer widget and repeat the action at a, uh, a consistent time or periodic basis. <clears throat> uh, the paint box widget uh, is shown here. Let's see, I'll show you an example of this shortly. And the object list, which I mentioned earlier, is used to select one or many objects associated with logic state. I'll show you an example of this shortly. And this is oftentimes used with the checkbox widget from the uh, widget tab as well. <clears throat> Let's see, this is our all widgets demo program. You can use this to test objects and see how they actually function. The individual widgets are shown here, and when you click on the name, it will take you to a page which demonstrates how they can be used. Let me get this going. <clears throat> so let's see, first we have our push button widget. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, you label it, and you press the button, and you trigger an action. <clears throat> so as you can see, there's it can be various colors, various fonts, uh, different thicknesses, just uh, they're push buttons. <clears throat> so they act like push buttons when you touch it. Uh, it triggers an action based on a tag value or logic that you configure in the background. And we'll go over some examples of that shortly. <clears throat> uh, next is our slider widget. <clears throat> this is shown to, or this is used to display or control analog values. Uh, the left side shows the uh, uh, vertical orientation where uh, the line fills upward. So that if you click on the bottom portion, it'll equate to the lower limit. If you click on the top, it'll uh, associate with the higher limit of the tag. And the right side shows uh, the horizontal orientation <coughs> and acts in a similar way. And you can adjust the properties in the inspector tab. <coughs> uh, next is the bit button. This is a momentary button. <coughs> in this example. And basically the logic uh, for this is it just increments uh, one count per uh, push. So every time you push the button, uh, the count increments. And this is again controlled by the logic in the background. I'll give you some examples uh, shortly. Uh, the touchpad is C programmable or ladder program. So you can uh, choose which one you prefer. If you are more familiar with ladder, you can uh, use ladder. If you're more familiar with C, you can uh, do C programming. Let's stop. Let's see where am I? Show that. 
Okay, uh, next is the hotspot widgets. This is a very useful one. Uh, in a few slides, we'll show you a great example of how it's used. Essentially, the ICP DOS logo is just a picture, and the action when you touch the spot is actually happening in the background as if it were a button press. <clears throat> this can be a great tool for also creating like maintenance screens or hidden spots where if the operator knows where to push, they can go to a secondary screen or a a diagnostic screen or something. Uh, the checkbox widget, again, is used with our object list very often. In this case, uh, what do you call it? It's just a checkbox widget, but uh, we'll show you an example shortly where it's used in conjunction with our um, object list, and <clears throat> it'll act as a button or a light or indicator, uh, depends on what you choose uh, graphic-wise. Again. Hmm. Okay, let me just find out where we were. Uh, back, back. Oh, okay, so here's our checkbox widget. And okay, uh, next is our timer widget. It can simply be a timer. In this case, uh, it's just set to periodically change the value of the uh, text in the boxes on a periodic basis. So it looks like about every two seconds it changes from hello to ICP DOS and vice versa. Okay, uh, let's see, next. <clears throat> Let's see, this, is the progr this program is downloadable, and you can use, use it to see the properties by selecting the objects and demonstrate how you can use them in your projects. Uh, let's see, it's downloadable from our FTP site. I can provide a link, or it's also in the manual for the touchpad. <clears throat> uh, this project has nine frames, as you can see at the bottom. Each frame is one screen, so you can navigate to the individual screens uh, by, uh, uh, what do you call it, it's pushing a button or however you determine on your screen. Uh, you can view the code behind each object. Let me just show you this. <clears throat> okay, it's just showing the screens, <clears throat> the, the different frames and what they look like. Uh, by double-clicking on the object, in this case it was C programmed, so you can see the actions uh, by double-clicking on the individual widget of what happens uh, based on that object. See, this is a slider widget. Uh, the properties are shown on the right. You can modify the max and min and the tag value associated with it. And again, uh, very shortly in one of our other demos, I'll show you how it's used. See the hotspot, as you can see, is just an image on the screen, and the box is defined as the area. Okay, and let's see, you can use this as you uh, as a demo to show what the widgets are, how they act, or even to just test the touchpad and to you know test your logic, see if it makes sense. And you can follow the examples shown, or we can, you know, oftentimes help you with uh, programming if uh, there's a function that we don't have a demo program for. Uh, the library of images includes many control objects like buttons, lights, and other control objects which you can use in your project. You can also import your own objects into HMI Works. Oftentimes, like the background screens are uh, what you want to spend time on. It can be something as simple as just a, a logo for your customer or even just a colored background to make uh, the touchpad objects uh, look much better <clears throat> and uh, customize it yourself. <clears throat> Let's see, the, the TPD can be used as shown prior with our widgets or you can use logic 
uh, using Ladder Designer or C programming for controls as well. I'll show you an example shortly. Uh, this is our a picture of our Ladder Designer with a, a sample program. Uh, let's see, on the left side, you have your contact input to define triggers for each ladder rung. Then you can use either a function block or a coil associated for an output tag to perform an action. Uh, you can also associate them with virtual tags if uh, you want to trigger something internally. Uh, each rung has its own trigger and program will continuously cycle through the logic uh, let's see, uh, as uh, shown on the screen. <clears throat> and just executes one rung at a time. And if the condition is true, it uh, continues down the rung, or I'm sorry, the, the line, or it goes to the next rung. Let's see, here's a slide showing uh, the built-in function blocks. Uh, you can create your own, or you can use one of the commonly used functions or actions uh, that we uh, have built into uh, the HMI works. Uh, we continuously add features to the function blocks as you uh, update HMI works. Make sure you get the latest version so you get all the function blocks that were pre-designed. Uh, the manual shows uh, some ways to create your own function blocks and add them to HMI works. So like for instance, if you have a function you use all the time and uh, do touchpad designs, you can create your own function block for it and make it simpler for the next time you uh, create that. Or if you use the same object on multiple screens or multiple times, you can also, it would also be a great opportunity to create a function block. <clears throat> Let's see. I'll go through the function blocks. Uh, let's see, the function blocks are uh, separated into different categories. Each category uh, is predetermined, but you can also create your own categories and add objects and change objects to different categories. Like, for instance, if you wanted to uh, create a main category because you, know, you use these all the time, you can certainly do that. Uh, so this is uh, something that we can help you edit. It's also in the manual. But each of uh, the different uh, function blocks shown here uh, do pretty much what uh, the function block name says. Like in this case, there's add, subtract, multiply, divide. In these, you determine whether the touchpad beeps or doesn't beep when you push the button. Uh, you can uh, control timers using these uh, function blocks. And there's some user-defined ones. Uh, some of these, like the word to float, and uh, those are great for uh, number conversion, especially in Modbus. And for the VPD, it has some front panel keys on some models that uh, you can use these to get the status of the uh, panel keys, or you can control the LED around them to press the buttons. Let's see, HMI Works supports both Ladder Designer and C programming. Uh, we have demos for most of the functions that the touchpad can provide in C. Uh, here's a screenshot showing the C development environment. Uh, basically, just enter your code, and uh, the more objects you have, uh, the, the code will uh, increase. And again, uh, using our APIs, you can uh, modify the program, or you can use some of the built-in uh, templates that we have. <clears throat> Let's see. The design for some touchpad projects are deceptively simple. <clears throat> Let me give you an example. Let's see. OK. Here. OK. So this is an example for one of our, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, factory conference rooms. Uh, notice that it uh, has on the right side, it would show the temperature both on an analog scale and numerically next to the uh, degree C, there would also be a numerical display. Uh, plus there's some buttons that which navigate to different screens. Let me show you the insides of it though. But taking a look at it really is just a Photoshopped image uh, with some graphics as main screen. It has a slider widget which uh, shows uh, the analog value up and down as the temperature changes. And we also have a label widget, which numerically shows uh, the temperature. Uh, then we have some hotspots, which act as the buttons behind the images uh, shown in the picture. So in this case, it would convert to different screens or perform different actions. 
uh, that would just turn off the lights and turn off the power. Okay, but uh, if you notice, there's not really much to it except for the, uh, what do you call it, uh, the Photoshopped image. That's the background, and then it has a few hot spots and uh, a slider widget and a label widget. <clears throat> Let's see, because the TPD was designed for building automation applications, we add in two of the most popular forms of communication to monitor and control equipment. Modbus TCP and Modbus RTU can be used to control uh, devices, objects, uh, through the touchpad, either through the Ethernet port for Modbus TCP or through the serial port uh, using RS-485 for Modbus RTU slave devices. Uh, the TPD can also act as a master device or I'm sorry, acts as the most master device in most cases, but can also uh, be used as a slave device if you want to connect it to an external PLC, HMI, or SCADA for supervisory control, data logging, or just simple uh, monitoring. Like for instance, if you had multiple rooms, you can uh, connect them all and know the status of them, yet have the same controls in each room, like if uh, all rooms have the same machinery or controls or similar controls. You can use the same profile in each room. Let's see. Here's an overview of our meeting room demo, which I showed you earlier. Uh, this uh, is actually being used at our factory. Uh, the TPD is used to monitor and control various I.O. In, in the conference room, such as lights, air conditioning, and projector uh, using IR an IR blaster shown in the left side picture at the top. Uh, basically, anything that uh, uses a remote control can uh, be controlled using the infrared module. So it acts like a remote control. And just uh, what do you call it? when the button is pressed, it triggers an IR action and uh, the signal is broadcast and the volume will turn up or turn down. The power will turn on and turn off and so on and so forth. Um, let's see, on the right side, we use we add our LC-103 to control uh, some other devices like lamps and uh, uh, other electrical devices running on 120, uh, acting as a Modbus R2 slave device. <clears throat> let's see, we'll now answer any questions for you. Uh, let's see, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to raise your hands, type them in the chat box, or... Um, uh, ra yeah, raise your hand and we'll uh, call call on you and open the mic. Any questions? Hmm. Let's see. I don't see any questions. Let's see, I'm not seeing any questions either, Robert. So, let's see if we have any hands raised. Okay, I just want to mention that we have like many, many demo programs uh, for the touchpad. We also have a series of videos on how to program in C in more depth if you uh, want. And if you uh, use ladder logic to program, uh, so the manual itself will help you. Plus, uh, we can help you with your program changes or something if uh, something is not working right. Uh, I guess this concludes uh, this month's presentation. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next month. Um, Colin, do you know the topic of the next uh, webinar? Uh, no, not not off the top of my head. I don't know, but uh, hopefully we'll... Uh, let's see, it'll be on our website. So if you uh, like this webinar, uh, you know we can send you a copy of it. It'll also be on our website. Uh, thank you for attending, and we'll look forward to seeing you or talking to you uh, shortly. Thank you. Thank you, Robert, and thank you all for attending. Uh, if you have any, if you think of any questions, you can use our contact information on the screen. And we uh, we hope to see you next month. So thank you very much.